Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This video will be a little different in that we will be taking Disney princesses and recreating them to see how they might have looked in real life. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces I take portraits and transform them to see how individuals we read about might have looked in real life. So let's get started. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more historical recreations. And let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. As a disclaimer, I did keep their makeup. I did not go for a full historical look. And I will also be talking about the time and place that each story possibly could have been set in. Let's start off with Disney's most famous character, Cinderella. The film takes place in France. We speculate this because when the film begins, the narrator mentions she lives in a chateau and the architecture of the home is very French. Plus, during the ball scene, the announcer announces French guests like Mademoiselle Augustine Dubois, the daughter of General Pierre Dubois, and another name, De La Tour, daughter of Colonel and Madame De La Tour. The time is around the early 1870s based on the style of the dresses. When they were children, the girls' dresses were clearly filled with an 1850s to 60s hoop skirt. Once older, Drizella and Anastasia have exaggerated bustle dresses, which is in the 1870s and 80s. However, I am more inclined towards the early 70s because even though the 80s had a big bustle, the dresses were more fitted. During the 1870s, the skirts were looser, as seen in the film. Cinderella's gown, in contrary, contains a more elliptical-shaped hoop skirt with a flatter front and a slightly larger behind, which was in the 1860s. Her mother's dress had less of a butt and was even all the way around, indicating the pink dress was an earlier outdated fashion back in the 50s or 40s. What also confirms this decade is during the ball scene, the guests are visibly wearing a mix of 1860s gowns with a slight behind and early 1870s with a bigger behind. Perhaps people still used their 1860s gowns even though the height of fashion was in the 70s. And realistically, not everyone would be trendsetters. If it was in the 1880s, think about it, no one would be in an 1860s 20-year-old hooped fashion, especially at a royal ball. So maybe it does take place in the early 1870s during an in-between fashion period, and Drizella and Anastasia are just extreme fashionistas, or at least they think themselves to be, by walking around town with the biggest bums, and this fools us to think it's the 1880s. Number two is Snow White. The place, Germany, or the Netherlands, or Belgium. We know this because of the clogs Snow White wears. Also, we can see the style of the woodwork in the dwarf's home is very Germanic. Plus, they yodel, which was famous for the regions. The time is in the early 1500s. We can decipher this through various clues. First, Snow White's slashed sleeves. We can start to see this trend in the late 1400s and well throughout the 1500s. We also see the evil queen wearing a wimple, which is the scarf around her head and neck. And this fell out of fashion in the 1400s. So being an older woman, she could have worn the older style still. Number three is Aurora. The film takes place, some say in England, some say Germany, others France. It's hard to tell, but there is the fact that the film plays the 1815 to 1830s French national anthem. The time, Philip clearly says, after all, this is the 14th century. However, the dresses resemble the 1400s, with long gowns, lack of hoops, high waistlines, and noticeable headdresses. The tall, pointy headdresses, called Henan, developed in the late 1420s and ended in the 1500s. Perhaps Philip could have meant to say this is the 15th century since the fashion would have been very different in the 1300s. Number four is Ariel. The author Hans Christian Andersen was from Denmark so he could have based the location off of where he was from. But he did travel to Italy and it seems a lot of Italian inspirations are present in the film including warmer Mediterranean blue sea. 
whitewashed walls and red roof, which, to be fair, can also be found in Portugal and Spain. The bathtub has the same design as the Neptune fountain in Rome, and the palm trees, flamingos, tropical fish, dolphins, and sharks can all also be found in the Mediterranean Sea. And for those reasons, others speculate Italy. The time. It's hard to tell. Ariel's poofy leg of mutton sleeves were fashionable in the 1890s, but the 1830s had poofy sleeves too. The wedding dresses are reminiscent of the 1890s with the sleeves and lack of undergarment cages and crinolines, but the rest of the dresses are cylindrical, incorporating those hoops or a ton of petticoats like in the mid-Victorian. Even her daughter Melody has a cylindrical dress. But then we see her guests wearing suits from the 1700s. Maybe it was a costume party. Also, her town outfit is similar to Empress Sissy's dress, which is in the mid-1800s. Number 5. Bell. Time, mid or late 1700s. We're going to ignore the shape of the ball gown, which should be wider than round. Other examples include Gaston's pistol, the blunderbuss, which was in use in the late 1700s or the early 1800s, and her father has a steam machine, and this technology started to develop at the end of the 1600s and the beginning of the 1700s, but they were used in big industrial layouts. So by the time the technology or information would have become compact or widespread enough to make its way to a little townsman, it probably would be at least the mid to late 1700s. Plus, the Baroque and Rococo architecture is all throughout. With names like Belle, Le Fou, Gaston, and Lumière, it's no secret that the Beauty and the Beast takes place in France. Number 6. Pocahontas. This one is pretty clear as it's stated. Time is 1607, the place in Virginia, America. Number 7. Mulan. Disney's Mulan is from a completely fictional dynasty of China. It does not attempt to associate itself with any exact historical period. The story is said to have originated in the Northern Wei Dynasty between the year 400 and 500 AD. However, Disney's Mulan doesn't specify this. Also, the Great Wall is made of bricks in the film, which wasn't used until the Tang Dynasty after the year 600 AD. Furthermore, gunpowder was invented around the year 800, but wasn't used in rockets like in the film for war until the 1200s. Lastly, each dynasty fashion had its own unique identity, and based on her clothes alone, we can rule out Qing, Ming, and Song. In Mulan, we have styles of each Tang, Northern and Southern, and also Han, which spans from 200 BC to 900 AD. So realistically, to narrow it down, I'm guessing Mulan spans between 400 and 900 AD. But truthfully, you can't pinpoint a particular time because there are so many factors out of place. Number 8, Tiana. This one is pretty easy. It's 1920s New Orleans. And lastly, number 9, Alice. Time period, the middle of the Victorian era, 1860s, evident by the hooped gowns. Plus, the book was published in 1865, and the location was England. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more historic recreations, please consider subscribing to my channel. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel, and it allows me to continue making more content for you. It's the best way to support me. Let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. I do make a list of all your suggestions, and I'll see you in the next one.